Good to be here with all of you. Good to see all of you. Now, Sunday evening service, joining with a hunger for the word of God. How many of you are hungry for the word of God? If you are not hungry for the word of God, oh boy, what good can happen in our lives without the word of God? Amen. So, we're going to turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 19 today. And we're going to read verses 11 to 17. Acts chapter 19. Verses 11 to 17. Let me read these six verses to you. Acts chapter 19, verse 11 to 17. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jew, Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Glory be to his name. Thank God for his word. This evening, my precious people of God, titled The Holy Spirit of God has given me for today's sermon is inviting demons. Inviting demons. I shared a couple of maybe a week or two ago on a very similar topic about how children of God invite demons into their lives. And then they end up in a place where they are so oppressed by the work of the enemy. If you remember what I shared maybe a week or two ago, one of the ways that a child of God can invite demons to come and influence their lives is through their mind. The mind is a portal where if you open a door through your mind, through your thoughts, you can allow demonic influence to come into your life. The same way, my precious people of God, today we are going to look at another way that even a child of God can open an, a door in another way where you can allow demons to come and interfere with your life. That is something that we shouldn't do because when that happens, it becomes a bit messy. Not a bit messy, it becomes quite messy. Now we can see how messy it became here because the seven sons of Sceva, the Bible says, they tried to do the same thing that the other exorcists, the Jewish exorcists were doing trying to cast out demons in the name of Jesus, having no covenant with the Lord whatsoever. They were trying to do this. And what was the response? What was the response of the evil spirit? The evil spirit said, I know Jesus, I know Paul, but can you tell me who, who are you? You have no power over me. In other words, the demon was telling the seven sons of Sceva, you have no power over me. That's why the Bible is telling us that demon leaped into that person who was trying to cast it out and it overpowered them. My precious people of God, one of the ways that you also open up doors for demonic in, in, intervention into your life. Or in other words, another way that you can, that you invite demons into your lives is by your words. Is by your words. The words that you speak determine, the Bible tells us, whether it's going to be life that is going to come out of your mouth or whether it's death. How do we know this? Proverbs chapter 8, verse number 21, the Bible says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And you will eat the fruit of what you speak. That's what the Bible says. My precious people of God, 
You need to understand this is a very serious matter. Your words are very serious. Your words are very powerful. And all of us need to reassess ourselves. We need to revisit our language, the words that we speak every day, because every single day, there could be at least one or few unnecessary words that come out of our mouths. And if we don't put them right, you can open up an unwanted door for demonic influence. It doesn't matter you are a believer. It doesn't matter that you are a born-again believer. I have shared this. I have done enough and more teachings on this study where I have proved to you from Scripture time and time again that Although a child of God cannot come under complete overtaking of a, a, a demon in terms of a possession, demons can't possess completely a child of God because your ownership is with the Lord today. But my precious people of God, as a child of God, you can still come under demonic oppression. You can come under demonic oppression. And sometimes... We have prayed for precious children of God where even like, you know, unbelievers, when they are delivered, when the Lord delivers them, it's very messy. They scream, they shout, they howl. And then evil spirits leave them. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 7, a fool's mouth is his destruction. Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 7. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. My precious people of God, we need to understand the spirit world responds very much according to our words. The spirit world responds very much according to our words. That is why when we backtrack to Genesis chapter 1, the Bible tells us, when God created the heavens and the earth, what did he do? Did God just fold his hands and wait? No. God spoke the existence into being. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, then God of a slide. So God commanded by his words. With his words, my precious people of God, God brought this world into existence. So therefore, you need to understand the spirit world responds or functions very much according to your words. This is why the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8, that to be so and to be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So you need to understand the spirit realm doesn't rest. Although you and I, we rest in the night, although we go to sleep in the night, there is no, no evil spirits out there. They don't sleep. They don't take rest because they are constantly, they are out and about trying to fight someone whom they can devour. That is why my precious people of God, we have to be very careful when it comes to the words that we speak. Because the Bible very clearly says what we speak can bring life so much of potential because your words carry potential. You need to understand your words are connected to your inner being. They are connected very much to your spirit. They are connected very much to your heart. That is why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 12, verse number 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. This is why very often I tell each and every one of us, guard your heart and make sure that you are carrying the word of God richly in your heart. Because unless otherwise what happens is, when you are not guarding your heart, you will be speaking a completely different language altogether. Because as a child of God, God wants you to speak this language, the language of his word, which you find in the Bible. And when we don't spend enough time in the word of God, my precious people of God, we don't know what to speak when challenges come. We don't know what to speak when disaster strikes. So you need to understand that the spirit world responds according to your words. This is why if you come for our Wednesday 
healing services and the miracle hour service. If you come for our, uh, once a month, uh, the worship night at Union Church, how do you see people receiving breakthroughs, prophecies, and all of that? My precious people of God, it is based on utterance. Your utterance can do something in the realm of the Spirit. How many of you are understanding this today? That the power of your words, that it has a lot to do with the spirit realm out there. This is why the Bible says, what you speak, my precious people of God, can either bring life or can either bring disaster. This is why Jesus tells us in John chapter 6, verse number six, 63, if you have your Bible with you, not I shouldn't say if you have your Bible, you should have your Bible with you. Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 6, verse number 63. Jesus says, It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing, and the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Can you see what Jesus is telling? Jesus is telling the words that he speaks unto you and I, they are spirit and life. So can you see how the spirit is mirrored together with your words. This is why Jesus shows us from time and time again the power of our words. Let me give another example. I don't have it in my notes, but the Lord has reminded me. Mark 11, chapter two, uh, Mark chapter 11, verse number 23. What does Jesus say in Mark chapter 11, verse number 23? Jesus says, if you command this mountain to be moved, it will move. So commanding is what? How can you command? In order for you to command, you need to use your words. You can't command anything without your mouth being closed. My precious people of God, this is why it's important for us to, I'm going to read you know, Mark chapter 11, verse number 23. Jesus says, For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So, one of the ways that demons enter a person is through their words. If you speak the wrong language, you can very well open up doors for demons to come and influence you. And like I said, when demons come, it becomes very messy. It becomes really messy sometimes when they come and when they create strongholds. I have shared about this recently also. Very especially when they create strongholds, it will become a real struggle for that person. Because strongholds need to be broken and sometimes it's not easy for those strongholds to be broken. So my precious people of God, this evening, you need to understand that the power in your words can do two powerful things. I'm going to show you two powerful things the power of your words can do. Number one, your words can either bring life or destruction to you. According to Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 21, okay? this is the verse that I'm going to use to show you the power of your words. As much as your words can either bring life or destruction on you, your words also can bring life or destruction to someone else. As much as you can harm your own self with your own words, you can harm someone else with your words. Now, aren't we guilty in this area? Haven't we done this somewhere down the line? We, are, we have all fallen in this area. At some point, something unwanted has come out of our mouths and we, you know, to someone we have said something that we shouldn't have said. So we are all victims in this area. But the key is with the power of the Holy Spirit of God that he wants us to overcome in this area because you know why, my precious people of God, demons wait until you say something wrong to gain entry. They are waiting out there to seek a moment where something unwanted comes out of a child of God's mouth. That very moment, they have found entry. 
into that person. Let me give you a couple of examples, which will help you to understand what kind of things, what kind of phrases, sentences that you speak can open up doors for demons to come and influence you. For example, when a person says, oh, I'm not good enough. Do you know there is a door that they are opening up when they say, I'm not good enough? That's a door for a demon of condemnation to come in right there and to condemn you even more. Because you are condemning yourself, you are thinking, oh, I'm not good enough. I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can't, I can do this job. Even before you have started, you are now condemning yourself. Let me give you another example. When someone says something like, oh, I don't think I will live long. You say something like that, two months down the line, suddenly you get a pain in your stomach and you go to the doctor and they do a scan to see there's like a very unwanted growth inside of your stomach and you begin to wonder how that started to see even now you can't remember two months back what has happened. You have opened your mouth and said, oh, I don't think I will live for that long. That becomes an open door for a spirit of infirmity to come and plant a seed they gather. You know, when one demon comes, they will see, they will analyze the way that they can really trouble the person. And then when they know that that child of God is not taking enough preventive measures by spending time in the word of God, it will go back and it will bring reinforcement. That is what Jesus says in Luke chapter 11, verse number 24. Demons will bring another group of seven demons that are much more powerful than them. Let me give you another example. Some people, have you heard some people say, oh, what happened to my parents will also happen to me. There are some people who say things like this. So they think, you know, certain illnesses that their parents have. They openly say this, oh, my father had this, my mother had this, so I will also have this. So on my 60th birthday, when you come for my 60th birthday party, you will see me having this condition. They prophesy into their future. No, they prophesy their future by connecting it to the past. And their parents have also you know, gone to be with the Lord. They're connecting to what the parents went through. And they're prophesying and saying, oh, what happened to my parents? That will happen to me also. These are those that even children of God can open up through the, your words. You say things like this. Let me give you one more example. There are some people who will say things like, you know, nothing good will happen to me. They believe that nothing good will happen to them and they will say nothing good will happen to me. I had a teacher back in the days, you know, because I was so good, that teacher always used to tell me, oh, nothing good will happen to you. you know, the only thing that you're good at is fighting. You come to school to fight. That's the only thing that is in your mind. But thank God for Jesus who has transformed us. So there are people who will look at someone else and say, oh, nothing good will happen to you. And they will look at themselves also and say, oh, nothing good will happen to you. So that becomes an open door. So if you are a person, my precious people of God, if you have confessed something negative like this, today is the day you need to repent. You have to put things right and you need to make a, a firm decision that you are not going to say these things. Because we live at a day and age where children of God, they are taking their words for granted. They are taking their words for granted. This is why Jesus said, for every idle word that we give, we will be held accountable. You can't twist scripture. You can't pluck scripture out of references and pretend like Jesus never said these things. No. Your words carry power. Remember, either to give life or either to give birth to death. Let me read Matthew chapter 12. Verses 33 to 37 to you. These are the words of Jesus, okay? Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 to 37. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. 
A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil, evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Can you see what Jesus is telling? And in verse number 37, Jesus, to sum it up, he is telling, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. It can't get better than that. Jesus is putting it simple. He's keeping it simple and he's keeping it very clear, saying, for by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. The moment you say the wrong thing, my precious people of God, you know what you are doing? You are putting your guard down. And when I say you are putting your guard down, you are putting your spiritual guard down. And when that happens, it becomes easy. The demons are there to gain entry and to oppress you. If you are going through a, a season of, you know, if you are a person, for example, day by day, you know, day in and day out, night by night, you are having sleepless nights. You are suddenly troubled, you, are, you get woken up in the middle of the night. Your thoughts are troubled. Maybe you would have said something unnecessary and given permission, even without your knowledge, for, for demonic influence to enter into your life. Mark chapter 1, when we read verse number 23 onwards, we can see how Jesus delivered a person who was oppressed by demons in the, in the church, in the synagogue. So my precious people of God, we can't pretend like this doesn't happen to children of God. We can very well come under oppression, demonic oppression, if we don't guard our mouths. James chapter 3, verse number 8, the Bible says, the tongue is a very powerful thing. It can set the course of this nature on fire. It's, it's deadly, full of poison. And as we come to the end of today's sermon, I'm going to share a couple of people who fell into trouble because of their big mouths that we see in the Bible. Remember, very often we fall into trouble in this life because of our mouths. This is where, you know, as much as we can say something like that, we need to also understand the spiritual dynamics behind the power of our words. I pray from today that you will never take your words for granted. How many of you are telling the Lord today? Lord, I, will, I don't want to take my words for granted ever again, Lord. Because you need to understand there are spiritual implications that come into the picture based on what you say, what you speak. And it is a day of repentance. The Holy Spirit of God is Putting in my heart right now, he's telling me, tell my children as we worship Jesus in a moment to make it a day of repentance. That you will come before the Lord and you will repent for any negative thing that you have spoken over yourself. For any negative thing that you may have spoken over someone else, directly, directly or indirectly. Unless otherwise, demons will throw a big party if you don't close the, those doors. They will throw a big party inside of you, even without your knowledge. And the more they oppress you, the more satisfied they will be. And that is not the place God wants us to be. Adam and Eve, what happened to Adam and Eve? They fell into trouble because of their words. The enemy will very often, to, he will come to catch us in our words. This is exactly what the serpent did in the Garden of Eden. He came and he caught Eve with her words. How did he do this? Let's read Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Can you see how the serpent is making Eve, prompting Eve 
to say something unwanted? For this question, ideally, he would have said, yes, God has said, and we are going to honor what God has said. And done. But look at what he says. He says, has God really said to you that you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And then he tells the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The enemy came to catch Eve in her words. The enemy is waiting, my precious people of God. I want to tell you something what the Lord is telling me. According to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8, I read it to you a little while ago, where the Bible says, be sober and be vigilant. One of the reasons why the Bible is telling us to be sober and to be vigilant is because the enemy is waiting to catch us in our words. Because he knows the moment we say something wrong, they find a door of entry to get into us and they can have, jolly well have a good party by messing up our lives. And it is a serious matter. If you take your journey in the Lord seriously, if this life that you are living, how many of you know that this is the only life that you get? This is the only chance you get to serve the Lord. As long as you have breath in your lungs, in this life, that is the only time the only chance that you get to serve God, the only chance you get to be a child of God on this earth, this is the only chance. So you have to use this only chance that you have received a good opportunity for you to live a pleasant and a blessed life. The serpent came to catch Eve in her words. Judas Classic example. Judas. How did he betray Jesus? We know he betrayed Jesus with a kiss in the Garden of Gethsemane. But before that, the Bible says that he betrayed Jesus with his words. Do you know all these things that happened for Adam and Eve and for Judas for all these ways that they opened up unwanted doors with their words, ended up with complications. Bad things follow up, my precious people of God, when demonic influence steps in. Judas betrayed Jesus with his words, and later he went and hanged himself. Eve gave the wrong answer to the serpent. And as a result, she ate the fruit. Gave some to Adam. Both of them ate together. And the rest is history. Death came into this world because sin was introduced. Judas, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 26, verses 14 to 16. Let us read these verses. Then you will understand how what happened. Matthew chapter 26, verses 14 to 16. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? Oh, can you see how he is opening up the wrong door? He's opening up the wrong door by, with his words where he is telling the chief priest, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. So from that time, he sought an opportunity to betray him. And later on, we know what happened to him. Even before Jesus was crucified on Calvary, he went and he hanged himself. My precious people of God, this is not a joke. We have to take our words seriously. You must know that spiritual implications are awaiting us if we don't speak the right words. So, Today, if you are a person, you know for a fact that you have been entertaining thoughts and you've been telling yourself time and time again negative things, like the examples I gave. If you are a person who has been telling yourself, well, I'm not good enough. I don't think I can do this. 
I don't think I have the strength to do this. Probably if you are a person whose parents had serious struggles in their lives, if you have been telling yourself, well, my parents had it, no? so I will also have it. When it comes to their age, when I'm their age, I will also have it. If you have been saying these things, my precious people of God, you have already opened up doors. And those doors need to be closed today. Not tomorrow, right now. As we enter into a time of worship in a little while, you need to let the Holy Spirit of God close these doors. Unless otherwise, in 10 years time to come, when you reach your parents' sage, that very thing that you confessed over your life, saying that what my parents went through will also happen to me, it will definitely happen to you. Why? Because you have opened up that door and you have given a license for evil forces out there to come and to mess up your life. So those unwanted doors that you have opened up like that, they need to be closed. So how can you experience deliverance if you are if you have invited demons. The title today is Inviting Demons. If somewhere down the line, my precious people of God, with unwanted speech, if you have invited demon influence over you, how can we experience deliverance? Is by expelling them, by confessing first. You confess it to the Lord and say, precious Holy Spirit of God, forgive me. And as you repent, do you know what the Holy Spirit of God will do? As you repent like that, He will remind you the times, He will, he will even remind you in the past where you have said certain things. He will remind you, saying, Son, my daughter, this is what you said on such a day. Remember, you were talking to this person and you were talking about your parents and suddenly you said, Oh, this is what my parents are going through. No, and it's proven, no medicine, medi all these things they have proven, you know, according to heredity, you no know, things are passed from generation to generation. So I believe what happened to my parents will happen to me. He will remind you of that very moment that you said something like that, and he will prompt you to repent. And do you know what happens when you repent and when you confess before the Lord and when you repent? The demons out there who gained entry, they no longer have that license to remain in you. They have to leave. Then do you know what happens? Once you repent, when the Holy Spirit reminds you, you need to expel. You need to cast them out. Then you need to take authority in the name of Jesus and say, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. I command to get out of me. I declare in Jesus' name, what happened to my parents will not even cite me because I am a new creation now together. This evening, my precious people of God, you need to cast out those demons that you would have opened up those some time ago. Remember, there are two ways Jesus teaches us to expel demons. Number one, by his spirit. Number two, by the words, his words, your words are powerful. Let me show these, both these aspects to you from scripture. Matthew 12 verse 28. Matthew chapter 12 verse number 28. Jesus says, but if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Can you see what Jesus is telling? If I cast out demons by the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Last verse for today. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 16. In Matthew chapter 8, verse number 16, Jesus says, or the Bible says, When the evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast them out with his word. Look at what the Bible is to me. He cast them out with his word and healed all who were sick. So my precious people of God, today is a day where any legal rights that you may have given any evil spirits, they need to be broken today. Those doors need to be closed today. I pray in Jesus' name that you will go before the Holy Spirit of God and that you will ask for forgiveness as we begin to worship the Lord right now. Hallelujah.
If you are that person who is who has been condemning yourself, you have said negative things. You need to come before the Lord right now with a heart of repentance. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Kiara Basidri Besuti Besinta. Riara Basiyan Rubusin Talarada Babin Talaba Zikara Baha. Riva Rida Basin The Bible says, with the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Sidra Basanta. As we worship Jesus in this beautiful worship song, I pray in Jesus' name that the Holy Spirit of God will bring into your remembrance as you repent and say, Lord, forgive me for every negative thing that I have spoken about. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Oh, Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. As we worship Jesus, will you come before the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me, I pray. Forgive me, Lord, don't let pride come in between you and the Holy Spirit of God this evening. If you know that you have said unwanted things, you need to repent. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, hallelujah, there is freedom. The Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. Oh, lift your eyes to heaven. There is freedom. Yes, there is freedom in this place. There is freedom, yes there is freedom, freedom reigns in this place, the showers of mercy and grace, falling on every face, there Holy Spirit is telling me there are one or two here based on your current circumstances there are negative things that you have spoken over yourself and you need to repent today and ask the Holy Spirit of God to forgive you in Jesus mighty name close those doors close those doors if that is you you can let us know if that is you you can let us know so that I can lead you, if you want me to lead you in a prayer of repentance, let me know, and I'm more than willing to do that. Because none of us are, thank you, Santi. Okay, right, Tej, I will lead both of you, and I'm going to wait a couple more seconds to see if anyone else is also going to respond. As a matter of fact, there's no harm. Okay, thank you, Aki. As I lead all of you, thank you, Twinkle. As I lead all of you in prayer, there's no harm in praying. There's no harm in all of us praying this prayer. Because if you believe that you don't know that you don't need repentance, oh my goodness, something is wrong somewhere. Okay, thank you for those of you who are responding. All of us, Saltra Balsantra, none of us are superstars in the kingdom of God. That's why we serve the one and only superstar, and his name is Jesus. It's only him who can forgive us our sins. All right, let us pray together. As I lead you in prayer, you can pray together with me and say, Precious Holy Spirit of God, this evening as I come before you, Search my heart, thoroughly, Lord, and remind me of every time 
that I have spoken negatively over myself and I repent for every negative word that I have spoken. Forgive me, Lord, I pray. The Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully created. So make it your prayer right now and say, Lord, thank you for you have fearfully and wonderfully created me. Help me never to condemn myself again. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I repent of opening up any unwanted doors for demonic influence. And I repent right now, Lord, of those negative words that I have spoken, Lord, over myself. And from today, Lord, help me to value myself. Because, Lord, you value me as your child. You love me as your child. You have given me so much of value, Lord. Lord, help me to see myself through the eyes of the Holy Spirit. Make it your prayer right now and say, Lord, help me to see myself through the eyes of the Holy Spirit now and always in the name of Jesus now let us pray and say Lord also forgive me for every way that I have grieved and hurt someone else with my words Lord for anything that I have said if they have opened up doors of demonic influence into their lives because of what I told them I ask for forgiveness, Father. Lord, if someone has stumbled because of me, Lord, please forgive me, Father. If someone has stumbled because of my words, Holy Spirit of God, please forgive me. And Lord, help me also to put it right, put things right with that person. As you remind me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Freedom reign. In this place, the showers of mercy and grace falling on every face. There is freedom. The showers of mercy and grace falling on every face. There is freedom. Now that you have repented, we come to that moment where we are going to take the authority in the name of Jesus. We are going to cast those dead demons out in Jesus' name. For those of you, you have been the spirit of doubt that has tried to cripple you begin to take authority in the name of Jesus and rebuke it and say Lord I rebuke every false spirit of doubt and unbelief in Jesus name I rebuke it Lord in Jesus name for those of you you've been struggling in the recent past to believe that something good is about to happen begin to take authority in the name of Jesus and say Lord I rebuke the spirit of doubt for unbelief is not my portion Lord and I will believe that you can do all great things for me, Father, because there is nothing impossible for you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, as you have repented, if you are a person who is going through any kind of addiction with anything, take it by its neck right now and say, Lord, I rebuke this addiction in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke and I break the addiction in the name of Jesus. Maybe anything for that matter. In the name of Jesus. Break it off right now in the name of Jesus. Freedom reigns in this place. The shadows of mercy and rain. I rebuke that fear 
regarding visa matters in the name of Jesus. Fear to do with visa matters in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that fear of failure in the name of Jesus. Be set free right now in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus, at the appointed time, your passport will have the new visa in the name of Jesus. I'm led by the Lord right now to pray for anyone here who is thinking of remarrying, of getting married again in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray for discernment in the name of Jesus. If that is you, lift up your hands unto the Lord and say, Lord, fill me with discernment, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, fill me with sound discernment in the name of Jesus. Give me wisdom, Lord. Give me wisdom, O Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that according to Psalm 37 verse 23 that it will help your children to take the steps that you have ordained for them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I declare, Lord, that none of their steps shall slide in Jesus' mighty name. There is freedom in the name of Jesus. The Lord is telling me, because you have repented, there is a person here, you are going to see that pattern of constant headaches stopping in Jesus' mighty name. There is a person here, the Lord is telling me, you've been having a, a series of constant headaches in Jesus' mighty name. That is going to stop in the name of Jesus, because that door has been closed today in Jesus' name. The mighty name of Jesus. You can let us know if that word is for you. Thank you, Santi. But I sense there is someone else as well along with Santi here. That word is applicable to you. So let us know if that is you. We want to bless his holy name and we want to rejoice for this new thing the Lord has started. How many of you are thanking the Lord for the freedom that is available right now in the name of Jesus? Because that is what the Holy Spirit of God does. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. He delivers His children. He delivers His children. Hallelujah. So do with a headache, someone being healed of a constant headache from time to time. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless Santi in Jesus' name. Father, we declare, Lord, that this headache, Lord, that has been troubling him, Father, as your son has come before you, Lord, has seen, Father, as he has put things right with your presence, Lord, this evening. Thank you, Lord, we declare that those headaches will never come back in the name of Jesus. There is freedom. The Lord is telling me there are some of you here. You're fearing that there will be a collapse in your finances. This is what the Lord is telling me. You're fearing, you're scared that in time to come, your finances will come stumbling down. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that fear of failure in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you will not lack anything in Jesus' name. According to his words in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33, as you keep seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, God will keep adding unto you everything that you need in the secular life. If that is you, let us know. We're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. There's nothing to be ashamed because we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And we all need the Holy Spirit of God. None of us are exempt. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. The showers of mercy and grace. 
Thank you, Alicia. Jesus' name, we rebuke that fear. Lord, we rebuke that fear out of your daughter right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we declare that over Elisha and over anyone else here, Lord, who is having that fear, Father Lord. In the name of Jesus, fear of failure, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be set free right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, the Spirit of God. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, plead the blood of Christ of every thought in their minds. In the name of Jesus. There is freedom. The Lord is prompting me to pray for every family, any family here for that matter. Who needs peace, more peace within family members? Resolutions, much needed resolutions, much needed reconciliations. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, wherever there are, there is disharmony, wherever there are disagreements, misunderstandings. Father Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, I pray that you will close every door where the enemy has gained entry into the communication between these family members. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will close every door as your children has come before you and repented, Lord. In Jesus' name. Freedom reigns in this place. Showers of mercy and grace falling on every face. There is freedom. The Lord is reminding me Philippians chapter 1, verse number 21. The words of Paul in Philippians chapter 1, verse number 21, Paul says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. The Lord is telling me there is a person here, secretly, you are fearing death. And the Holy Spirit wants me to, he, he, he wants to remind you this evening that you are not going to pass unto glory before your time on earth. So therefore, in the name of Jesus, we come before the throne of grace with confidence, with boldness, and we declare, and we command every spirit of lies to get out of your mind right now in Jesus' name. We declare that life is your portion. We declare that you are not going to die before your time in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is freedom. Zidra Bazanta there is anyone here, you are sick in your body, you have your challenge with any form of sickness. Rabba Santa The Bible says, As Hezekiah turned to the Lord with his heart, and as he repented, the Bible says, The man who was about to die, God extended his life by another 15 years. In Jesus' name, I pray right now that no matter how you may be challenged in your health, that the Lord will remove that sickness right now in the name of Jesus. That blood vision that has been troubling you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that blood vision in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare in the coming days, in the next few days, I declare that your vision is going to improve. Your sight is going to improve in the name of Jesus. Receive that word, Rabba Santa Lada. Because there is someone here, unless otherwise the Lord will not prompt me to release such a word. Freedom. 
I bless every mother who is praying for their sons in Jesus name. If you are a mother who has a son, you are praying for them. For anything to do with their lives. I bless you right now. And I declare according to Psalm 138 verse number 8 that you are very concerned that God will perfect it in Jesus name. Zaldra ba zanda la da. And they're very concerned in Jesus mighty name that the Lord will perfect it for you according to Psalm 138 verse number 8 because he's the God who can perfect all their concerns in the name of Jesus. Be it a sickness, be it a job search, be it anything that you are praying on behalf of his son. I declare over you, precious mother, I declare over you that you will see in the days to come a reversal in Jesus' mighty name. A reversal in Jesus' mighty name. continue to worship the Lord. You can get your communion elements ready to partake in the table of grace. The shout of mercy and grace Once you get your community elements ready, if you can maybe put a thumbs up on your screen and let me know that you are ready. Because it will be nice. Thank you, John. It will be nice for all of us to partake together as a family. Thank you, Preeti. Thank you, Vanchu. Thank you, Tej. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you, Risha. Thank you, Aki. Freedom brings in this place. Thank you, Tinko. Thank you, Natasha. For Santi, for Teresa, Isabel, and Rami, Shanti, Antivella, and Luca. Thank you, Santi. Alright, thank you, Rami. Isabel and Teresa. Let us know once you get your communion and once ready. Say the number seven to the Calvary covers it all. My sin and shame don't count anymore. All praise to the one who has ransomed my soul. So I assume that Teresa and Isabel, that they will also have their communion elements ready to partake together with us. Let us all take the bread into our hands. Remember the body of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we remember your body. As you hold the bread of life in your hands, that is what Jesus said. John chapter 6 verse number 35. I am the bread of life. That is what Jesus said. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for you took my place on you, Lord. You took my sin, my shame, my guilt upon you. And you freely gave yourself as a willing sacrifice for me. 
and I can't thank you enough, Lord Jesus, for taking my place on Calvary. Thank you for your nail pierced hands. Thank you for every stripe you took on your back. And as your word says in Isaiah 53, verse number 5, by your stripes I am healed. Why don't you declare that and say, Lord, by your stripes I am healed? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I honor your body. In Jesus' name, you may partake of the blood of Christ. Take the cup into your hands. Remember the words of Jesus. Matthew chapter 26, verse number 26. Jesus, he took the cup into his hands. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and drink it. This is the blood of the New Testament that is shed for the remission of sin for many. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we are partaking in your blood. Remember the sinless blood that you shed for us on Calvary. Thank you for as your word says in Revelation chapter 1 verse number 5. My sin is wa washed as white as snow because of the blood of Jesus. Why don't you make that your bold declaration and say, Lord, thank you for your blood, Lord Jesus, washes my sin as white as snow. I am a new creation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. And from this moment, I will have a fresh beginning, free from every oppression because of the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, you may partake the blood of Christ. Amen. <coughs> mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Let's end our Sunday service with a time of praise, a time of celebration. Hallelujah. Service like this needs a time of celebration. We have to celebrate when demons have fled a hundred ways, screaming, seeing the blood of Jesus. So let us celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate. Be with you now and forever. In the mighty name.